Hey, this is Cam with Blacktail Studio, and this is the how to use my Blacktail Studio bowtie jig video. For this, you will only need a couple of things. One of those things is the Blacktail Studio bowtie jig. You'll also need a router like this one, and it doesn't have to be an expensive one. I'll get to that later. You'll need an eighth inch router bit that comes with an inlay kit, or if you don't want to buy the inlay kit, you can purchase this separately and use your own brass bushings. After that, you'll need some way to cut these out. I'll be using a bandsaw, but you could probably also use a table saw. And that is about it. And I'll show you every step to make several different designs. Even though there's only three slots here, we'll go through how you can actually probably more than double the number of bow tie designs you can get from this one jig. It's important how you know an inlay jig actually works. So how this jig works and how most all inlay jigs work is you have an eighth inch router bit, and that is really important. This doesn't work if you change the size of your router bit with these same bushings that I'm gonna show you. So with an eighth inch router bit, you have, this is the white side inlay kit, and what this has is a smaller bushing and then a larger bushing that clicks over the top of it. And what you use that for is you use that smaller bushing to cut your actual bow tie out, and then you take the same jig you add that larger bushing, and then you use that to cut your negative out. And with the eighth inch router bit, it'll give you a perfect fit basically every time. The important thing to know is the offset between the two bushings, between the one you're gonna use to cut your bow tie and the one you're gonna use to cut your negative needs to be a quarter of an inch. So this white side inlay kit has that built in. If I look at it, it's 5 16 and this larger bushing is 9 16 which equals a quarter of an inch. You can elaborate on this and make different multiple bow ties from using the same jig by just using that same math. So here is a 3 8 and a 5 8 difference of a quarter inch. And you can keep moving up to a half and, see if you're paying attention, 3 quarters of an inch. So all of these different designs will give you basically slimmer and slimmer bow ties because they're moving that router bit in. The bushings I'm gonna be using are the classic Porter cable style bushing, and not all routers accept this. However, most of them can get an adapter plate for it. I also have a Bosch router that takes these Bosch style bushings. So as long as the measurements for the offset, that quarter inch offset line up, everything will be fine, but I'll be using this Porter cable style bushing. It's also worth noting a lot of these larger bushings are thicker than a quarter of an inch. So what I've done, so I've just sacrificed a handful of these. I take them over to my bench grinder and I grind them down so they're shallower than a quarter inch, which is the thickness of this plate. Because if you put this plate on a piece of wood with a larger bushing, it won't work. Normally bow ties are used across a crack or some piece that needs stabilizing. However, to make it visually easier for you to understand, I'm gonna be using a nice clear piece of white oak and some nice high contrasting walnut bow ties. I'll be doing most of my examples on this vacuum clamp here, and if you don't know what that is, it's basically a big suction cup. So when I turn this on, it holds my piece really securely. So if you're confused how I'm working on a piece that isn't clamped down, that's how I do it. And you should definitely have your piece clamped down, just don't have it just loose on a tabletop. I personally like to cut the bow tie out first, so for that, I'm gonna be using this white side inlay kit, which is gonna give us the biggest bow tie. As you go up in bushing size, your bow tie gets slimmer and slimmer. So this is our biggest possible bow tie using the white side inlay kit, and now I have the bushing pulled off, as you can see. I personally really like this Scotch permanent double-sided tape, and even though it says permanent, it's not permanent. So. Do you want this to be very secure because you don't want your router to come off or to come loose when you're doing this. Pick your favorite spot on the wood and really put some pressure on it. And always give it a good wiggle. Try, almost try to knock it off because I've had that happen where it'll come loose and it's better to find out now than in the middle of trying to route this. These eighth inch router bits come in a quarter inch shaft opposed to the standard half inch. Most every router, at least every router I've bought, including those Bosch over there, come with an adapter for a quarter inch shaft. So you'll need to put that in.
and this is one of those things that you definitely want to be familiar with a router before you use this. This is not a course on how to use a router. This is just how to use this inlay kit. The first thing I like to do is I like to do a little mock pass where I can feel what it's going to be like going around the entire jig so that way there's no surprises. And I can also ensure that this jig is taped down good enough. Also, particularly with this router, I found it gets a little unstable if I'm pushing from the top. So I tend to work it from the base. You need to be really careful because you obviously don't want your fingers anywhere near the bit, but I feel like I have a little bit more control when I use it that way. And you really want to push it towards the outside of the jig, especially on this bow tie portion. It doesn't matter when you're cutting the recess, but when you're cutting this one, you don't want to let it work inside at all because then you'll cut into your bow tie. All right, I think we're ready to cut a bow tie. Sometimes the sawdust can get a little compacted. I just did a single pass there and probably would have been a little better off making a couple passes as that bit is starting to get a little bit dull. This doesn't particularly matter because as soon as we cut it out, all that dust will fall out with it, but I just prefer it get out now. Now I'm gonna use the same template, but I'm gonna change my bushing size and the router to show you the different styles of bow ties you can get using the same jig. This is the 3 8 bushing. Again, just the classic Porter cable style. And this will be used to cut the bow tie. And we'll switch over to the 5 8 when we wanna cut the negative. And as just a personal preference note, one of my favorite designs for these bow ties is if you can catch this linear movement, like this grain is here, I think it looks really cool. Doesn't do anything to the structure of it, but I think it just looks cool. So there's a good example of what not to do. When I mentioned keeping your pieces clamped down, my vacuum clamp actually wasn't on. It was still had a little bit of pressure from when it was on before, but it wasn't continuously running and the piece came loose and it kind of compromised. It nicked the end of that bow tie. So that bow tie is no good anymore. And just for fun, I've never done this before, but just for fun, I'm gonna change my bushing size now to that even slimmer bow tie and see if we can save that same spot by using a different bushing. Got the half inch bushing, which is what I want. So it looks like we actually saved it. Now we got a usable bow tie. No wrong way to take this tape off but I just like to have a nice flat chisel. Doesn't scuff the acrylic, comes off pretty easy. There is an important thing to note based on that last piece that I messed up. And that is when you're cutting the bow tie itself, it is possible to mess up using the jig. If you get a little bit squirrely, you can cut into your bow tie and essentially need to redo it. The good news is when you're cutting your negative, the piece in your actual table, that you can't really mess up with this jig because if you slip in at all, all that's getting routed out anyway, unlike this bow tie that needs to be a perfect outline of your piece. The negative, everything's getting hollowed out. So don't be too worried that you're gonna completely compromise your table if you mess up with this router jig. You can mess up the bow tie portion, but you can't really mess up the negative portion. I don't want to make my bandsaw work any harder than I have to, so I'm going to cut off the excess to make my resaw a little bit easier, and I'll show you what I mean here.
When you're using an eighth inch router bit, generally the depth that you're gonna be limited to of your bow tie is gonna be around a half an inch. These I cut a little bit shallower than that just for this example, and a half inch is still a very, very strong bow tie, so don't get too discouraged if you think you need like a one inch thick one. A half inch will really support a lot of weight. You can see that sawdust actually held them in there, but they come right out. So the bow ties I cut out for this example are only about a quarter inch thick, and I would recommend cutting a little bit thicker ones if you're doing a structural inlay where you actually have a big crack that needs holding together. And what you're limited by is the depth of this eighth inch router bit here. It's about a half inch deep cutting height and so that means you can only really cut a bow tie about a half inch or so which is plenty strong enough i promise but i do think this quarter inch is a little thin but you'll at least get the idea of how this works it's important when you're setting your depth not to set your depth too deep because then when you put your bow tie in it'll sink below the surface and you'll be kind of stuck and having to really remove a lot of material off the surface or putting a larger inlay over the top of that so how i how i set my depth is make sure your template's on there I set this on there and I just lower it until the router bit comes up slightly below the height of your bow tie. And then I'll lock it in and then you'll want to set your depth stop and all routers will have this right there. Double check. Perfect. Making sure our vacuum clamp is on or clamped down. This is very important to make sure it's completely taped down because this is simulating what your final table will be. So if this jig breaks loose in the middle of it, you're gonna have a big router mark across your table and you definitely don't want that. So really, really make sure it's taped down well. And I am just picking a random spot since I don't have any cracks in this piece. I'm gonna do a, a, kind of an aggressive pass just to make sure I'm not gonna break this loose. All right, ready to go. I do have a trick I can offer you and that is when you do your recess here, the fewer passes you make, the tighter it'll fit. So if you want a nice loose fit that with a little bit of wiggle room, and I say wiggle room, you still won't really see any visible gaps. You'll make several passes around in a row. However, if you want a very, very tight fit, you just plunge it down, make one complete pass all the way around, and then release it. This is the 5 8 bushing, which will go for the bow tie that we cut with this 3 8 bushing. Even though I prefer a snugger fit, I'll show you how you can get a slightly looser fit if you make just a few more passes with the router on this one. I've got a lot of experience with a router, so what I generally do is I'll remove the template at this point and then just hog out all this material with a quarter inch router bit. If you are a little nervous about this or you don't trust your free handing routing abilities, what you can do is put a slightly larger bushing on and then a quarter inch router bit and that will enable you to keep this guide up here to remove that entire center section without the risk of slipping into your table. And I'll show you that with this example here. The bushing that I'm using here is a one inch outer diameter and this is just an arbitrary bushing. All I wanted to do was push this out far enough so that I couldn't possibly hit the outside of this bow tie recess. So I do need to make sure, because I have this quarter inch bit in here now, that I reset my depth since I've moved my router bit. So we'll reset our depth and then show you how you can use this bushing as kind of a cheater way to hog out the center section without any risk to the table.
So I mentioned I like to freehand route out this center section, and really, it's just out of habit. I just did that little cheater method with the bushing, and that might be my new method now, because you don't really have to think about it. And I have messed this up before, where the router has gotten a little loose on me. So I'll show you how I do this, but honestly, that bushing method was pretty good, and also dust-free with that router. So I'll show you this, and if you don't want to do this, if you don't have a router for this, or you don't have a router bit for it, you can also just chisel this out. I've seen guys just sit there carefully chisel out the center section, which is a little risky, but I'll show you how I do it here. So we got all three of our recesses cut out and they look really nice. So everything went well, but what if something goes wrong? And so because of that, I wanna show you, I'm gonna intentionally damage one of these. I'll just put a little gouge with the chisel to show you a little trick. If you do have the router slip or something horrible happens on you, how you can try to patch it up. There is one trade-off when you go to those larger bushing sizes and you don't use that inlay kit like the one I used from Whiteside. If you use the one from Whiteside, you get these nice little radius corners and if you use those larger bushings, you actually get sharp edges, which I prefer the look of these, but it doesn't perfectly match in our recess here because of that radius in the router bed itself. So there is one additional step on the other ones where we use the larger bushings. This white side one, the white side inlay kit, we can push it in right now and it should fit just perfect. These other two, we have to go back with a chisel and just make the tiniest little sharpening of the corner so these will drop right in and I'll show you how I do that. And it's not much, you really don't need to take off very much at all. There is one trick I can offer you anytime you're doing any kind of inlay, whether it's with this jig or just a traditional inlay, and that's to make yourself a little satchel of matching wood dust. And so to do that, I got my belt sander and just an old bag that actually doesn't even fit this belt sander. I'm gonna use this to collect some dust. There's a little like makeup jar I bought from Amazon. and a little bit of this dust goes a long ways. The glue that I recommend is just traditional yellow woodworking glue. This is Type Bond Original. You could use Type Bond 2 or 3. I don't recommend using epoxy. That tends to leave a dark line no matter how tight your inlay is all around the perimeter. So regular old Type Bond and I'm gonna have just a little brush to put it on. You can see that my depths don't perfectly match and I could act like that was on purpose, but it wasn't. But it doesn't really hurt because it gives the excess glue somewhere to go. So we'll just say I did that on purpose. I usually apply it to both the negative and the positive. This should be pretty tight, so hopefully it's not too tight. That is tight, it's good though. I also like to have a little block to help spread the weight around. I think we're pretty good there. Now what I do, I take a little bit of this dust, and I just work it into that glue line. And this should fill those little imperfections that we induced. And if you need to add a little bit of glue, you can. Okay, on to the next one. And I will give you guys some advice is, if you're getting resistance, but the bow tie is in, sometimes you're better off not to force it because it'll still be structurally probably strong enough. And if you keep pushing it, trying to get it to bottom out, where it doesn't necessarily need to bottom out, you could end up breaking it. Although I think these ones both bottomed out just fine. All right, last one. I 
I thought this one might be a little bit looser and it was still quite snug. So we'll see when we get these sanded down how they look, but I feel pretty good about all of them. And if you have an area with a known defect, like that little intentional gouge that we put into, sometimes they can kind of sink down as that glue settles into it. So you may have to kind of refill that with more sawdust and glue. Right now, ours looks pretty good, but I'll keep an eye on it. And even if it does after it dries, we can just add a little bit more and it'll be fine. But I think we got these set pretty good for now. Generally, you need at least an hour or so cure time. Overnight is better. So after these are cured, we'll come back and sand them flush. All right, our glue has dried for about two hours now. Normally I give it a little bit longer, but it looks pretty dry at this point. So now we just gotta flatten it, which is pretty simple. You can use something like a hand plane. However, I've found a belt sander is a pretty low risk way to flatten these out where you don't risk any chip out. So we're gonna get this on the vacuum clamps, throw the belt sander on it and see how we did. All right, now that I'm almost there, I'm gonna switch over to my orbital sander. Since the grain is running this way and the bow ties are running this way, I'm gonna get the orbital to surface it the rest of the way down. So you can see we didn't quite get our spots filled, which isn't a shock to me. Everything else looks really good. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna mix up a little bit more of that dust, this time with some CA glue or super glue, touch it up with that and that should work. Now I'll hit it with the activator. Cures in about 10 to 15 seconds and we can sand it again and see how it looks. And that is really all there is to it to using this black tail bow tie jig. You can see we were able to fix those little ding marks and they really just look like some of the grain now. It's not completely invisible, but it's pretty good. The rest of these are pretty much CNC tight. I don't really have any complaints about how these ended up. And I've only used this jig a handful of times. There are a couple tricks and a little bit of skill to using it. So I do recommend practicing on a couple sample boards before you dive into your personal dining table but really pretty simple. And if you want more information on this, they are for sale on my website, blacktailstudio.com.